Okay, hi, this is Alexis DBF of Troublesome Tots, and I have just sent the links out that hopefully, with any luck, will um, will be working soon. Um, in the meantime, since you don't want to just sit here and watch me, you know, pet my cat, um, I wanted to answer some of the questions that were posted on um, the RSVPs. And one of the big ones is working up at, waking up at five in the morning. Um, so just to be clear, most kids are early risers. So, um, you know, good sleep may mean getting up at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. And it's frustrating. I'm nocturnal myself. I don't enjoy um, waking up <laughs> at 6 in the morning, but I've been doing so for the past eight years. So I just want to set expectations. I think sometimes we have this idea that we can convince our kids to sleep until 7 or 8, um, and that's just not realistic. They're just they're They're biologically wired to get up. Um, early. So um, the question is, when is too early too early? And sometimes the answer is that 5 a.m. is too early. Um, uh, if you put your child to bed at 7 or 7.30 and they're waking up at 5, then their night's a little slow, uh, a little short, you know, nine and a half, ten 10 hours. 11 would be kind of ideal. So the question is, what can you do? Um, and the answer is probably not as much as you would like. There's a few options. One is um, you can ignore them for a half an hour and do this for three to five, even seven days, and see what happens. Sometimes when it's boring and they don't have the stimulation of mom and dad coming into play, uh, they just get bored and they'll conk out and take a 45 minute nap and you know effectively start sleeping in. Um, the other answer is you can um, wait until they're two or older and then try a toddler alarm clock or some other visual cue, you know, a nightlight on a timer, and that will help uh, a lot of babies kind of figure out that you know, okay, we can gradually move our, our sleep out. So those are our two options. They're not awesome um, because nobody likes to be told to wait, but that's often kind of all they can do. So between the ages of one and two, there's not a whole lot of tools in your disposal. Um, all right, so enough about that. So I see uh, Meredith has popped in. Hey, Meredith, yes. how are you doing? Good, how are you? I am. <clears throat> I got G plus to kind of work after four failed attempts. I'm doing good. <laughs> Just how you so doing? you know, there, there is another link where there's other people in a Hangout, and I think they're just waiting. It was one oh. of the. So just so you know, I. I saw that you had posted a second link, so I left that chat. I can't even get back in there. I The quick story is, is I had a Hangout, I started the broadcast, and then I stopped it, and apparently once you've stopped it, you're done. You can't restart it. So I had to kill that one and start a new one, and I can't okay. even get back into that room where they are. I, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> uh, this is not what you came to talk about, but I have to say, I am a very smart person. I have four <laughs> college degrees. I have two master's degrees and was a full scholarship in grad school, and G plus makes me look like a, a boob every time. <laughs> and this is like my eighth one, and I read the documentation. They're constantly changing it. It drives me crazy. So, whatever. They should they could make it a lot more intuitive. So, I just have, I think my question is pretty straightforward. My daughter is a little over two. She uh, is 25 months old. And the issue I'm having right now is that she just takes quite a while to fall asleep at night. Mm. Anywhere, I would say, from 30 to 45 minutes on average, um. and even longer on on a really rough night. Okay. So what I've tried doing is keeping her schedule the same and simply moving her nap earlier to increase the awake time between her nap ending and her bedtime. But well, that, tell us a little bit about her schedule. Like, what is her bedtime, her nap time, her wake time? Sure. So her wake time is generally between six around six fifteen. Okay. And some days it can be earlier, some days later, but that's the average. Um, nap used to be about twelve thirty to two fifteen, two thirty. 
-hmm. And I found I was waking her at 2.15, but I was finding she was waking more naturally on her own at 2.30. Um, that was originally her nap, so I was letting her go those extra 15 minutes. And then she's in bed by about 7.45. Hmm. And a lot of times doesn't fall asleep till about 8.30. So what I did was shift her nap earlier because she always fell, falls asleep really easily for naps. Okay. So I shifted her nap to about 12 to 2. And she still, even though it's been shifted earlier, a whole half an hour, still falls asleep very, very easily at nap time. But even though the whole nap has been shifted, I've kept the same bedtime, but it doesn't seem to be equating to her falling asleep any faster. And I'm so you wondering out. she's not like upset or calling for you. Nope. Very calm. Goes very you know, will just stay up there very calmly. Just takes her a long time to fall asleep. Um and she's awake almost six hours between her nap time and bedtime. Mm -hmm. yeah, and by the time she falls asleep, it's it's usually it's about six and a half hours. So I know this is going to sound counterintuitive. Have you tried pushing bedtime up to closer to 7 or 7.15? I haven't. I have not. I always thought she wasn't tired enough, but I could certainly try. You know what? That's a tricky one. Um, and this has been going on for more than, like, a few weeks. Yes. This isn't just, like, a short term. This is, would you say, months? Yeah, since at least the beginning of the fall. Okay. So there's a lot of um, sleep regression-y stuff that happens around two, and a lot of it's just kind of behavioral, like kids, uh, you know, especially two-year-olds are getting a lot more in touch with their personal power and what, and there's a lot of limit testing and, you know, I pooped is a common <laughs> two-year-old mm -hmm. tool, um, but she's happily hanging out, so that's not what this is. Um, there's also the specter of nap dropping, but she's young. I don't think that's what this is either. If she was almost three, you might start to wonder if maybe she doesn't need to nap anymore, that kind of thing. What? So I don't have any good theories, but I think you're right. You don't want a kid... It, my, my personal litmus test is 20 minutes. Like, it really shouldn't take more than 20 minutes to fall asleep. And the risk is that when you spend long amounts of awake time in bed, you actually develop associations that that is where you don't sleep. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're right. Like, 40 minutes is too long. I don't have any good working theories, but my best theory is actually that she might be a tad um, awake t too long before bed. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that she goes down to sleep easily at 12, I think is great, because she's waking mm -hmm. up at 6, so that's 12 hours between when she wakes up and then she takes her nap. So I think, you know, while the standard is 1, I actually think for her a 12, 12-ish 12 nap is probably the better answer. Mm -hmm. But I almost wonder if she's not a, like... 5% overtired going into bedtime. So okay. what I would be curious is as an like a one week experiment and you can you know email me afterwards if it doesn't work but I'm going to say what happens if she goes to bed at 7? Because she okay. has taken a great nap which is awesome but her night sleep mm -hmm. is a little low, right? Like mm -hmm. it would be awesome to like stretch it a little bit out to closer to 11 hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we put her in bed at 7, even if she fell asleep at 7:30 and then slept until 6:15, we'd be getting a lot closer to the 11 hours. And I'd be curious to see if that doesn't help. The, I don't want to bore everybody with like hormonal talk, but the problem is, is that the sleep hormone, which is called melatonin, dissipates mm -hmm. relatively quickly. So it peaks when it's time to go to bed, but if you're not falling asleep right when it peaks, it's gone 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. Serotonin, which is the stress hormone, which we produce when we're overtired, lingers for hours. So mm -hmm. if she's even a little bit overtired, it's going to really make it hard for her to fall asleep. So I'm just wondering, like I would experiment with earlier and see okay. what happens. The worst okay. case scenario is she's awake longer. If she's if for five to seven days she's awake an hour, mm -hmm. then it's a complete failure. I'm completely wrong. Ignore everything I'm saying. But if it's um, still twenty to thirty minutes and or gets better, then I think mm -hmm. you're on the right track. Okay. So you would say right now, like as I mentioned, she's in her crib at approximately seven forty five, so you think seven would be the appropriate I would I would maybe, you know, over the next three nights move it back by fifteen minutes a night and yeah, I would okay. aim for seven or seven fifteen, which is still a pretty long stretch from two. Okay. Um, you know, five hours. And and just see what happens. And again, if it's no worse than it is now, I consider that a win. I mean it's not ideal, but it's better than where you're at. You know, okay. if she can sleep slightly longer, it extends her night. But if it makes things better, then I think then you've got your answer. 
Okay. And should I still keep making sure I wake her up at two? Because to be honest, I have to, I have to generally wake her at two. I mean, at least the past ten days where we've been doing this, she would keep sleeping if I let her. Huh. And she's in her crib at twelve, and I think well, a two-hour nap. Wake her up for, for naps actually is a, another data point that suggests you might be a little overtired getting to bedtime. So mm -hmm. I think you're right to wake her up because at two, we'd rather have a longer eleven-hour night sleep than a longer nap. Right, okay. so if she's going to distribute that sleep time to the day, if we have the option, it would. I'd rather have her sleep eleven hours at night and have her nap to sleep. Okay, and so you think two hours is sufficient? That two hours is not too long for her to be napping. Um, given the fact that her night sleep is on the short side, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, and one last question. Um, to your point about being in the crib too long, occasionally, every once in a while, she'll fall asleep or excuse me, wake up earlier um, than like say 6 a.m. and I'll just tell her through the monitor lay back lay back down it's not wake up time usually I use about 6 a.m. as sort of the threshold for when I'll go in and get her and she'll very nicely lay back down she won't cry but then I feel bad that it's sometimes I leave her in the crib for 45 minutes and she usually doesn't fall back to sleep is could that be giving her any negative associations um, I mean, that's a pretty mellow kid. <laughs> I, <don't do> <laughs> I know, I feel like but, it's really complaining. <laughs> um, you know, but I mean, there's other there's other options. I mean, she's two. So, first of all, I mean, I think if this is happening routinely, you, you could really easily, like with a $7 timer on a nightlight, give her a visual cue so that the timer, mm -hmm. the, the timer turns the nightlight off at 6. So, you know, if the light is on, then she just knows, like, it's still time for sleep. Um, I, I think when kids can hang out by themselves and they're, if she were in there screaming every morning for 45 minutes, then yes, right. that's a negative association. I think kids having alone time and just being left to their own devices and just passing the time in whatever way works for them, I think it's really healthy. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not, um, I think it's okay. Okay, so you don't think hanging alone or like a couple times a week in the morning is affecting her you know, causing her to not, to associate, you know, maybe making her stay up at night and having her hang out for a long time before she falls asleep at night. You don't think there's any association there? Well, I, th I think that, um, like, I th yeah, no, I don't, I don't want her hanging out in bed all the time awake, mm -hmm. but I think that if it's an occasional thing, it's okay. Because okay. the thing is, kids don't know what time it is when they wake up, right? They right. don't know. So they just woke up. And that's why I like the visual cue, especially because she's two, because sometimes it's morning time and sometimes it's not, and, you know, mm -hmm. what is, you know. So at two, like I said, it's a $7 for a timer or, I mean, I have a mm -hmm. toddler alarm clock, but whatever, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, I think that would be a really nice cue for her. And, okay. um, but I do think that, you know, it's odd to me that she's so interested in napping and that her night is short. So I think yeah. that there's some schedule tweaks that might try to extend her night. I mean, even if it means shortening her nap, like, 10 to 11 hours would really be a great goal. Like, really, okay. really. And if she's awake in her bed for 40 minutes and waking up at 5, that's a really short night. Yep. Okay, great. Well, I will definitely try that earlier nap um, and making sure she's up by 2 from – I'm sorry, earlier bedtime, excuse me, and making sure she's up by 2 for her nap. And then, um, you know, certainly that alarm, alarm clock might be useful. So I appreciate it. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, try it for a week and, and let okay. me know. Okay, great. Okay, so I've muted just about everybody. So if you, um, because otherwise ambient noise kicks in. So if you want to like gesture in some way that you have a question, uh, Julie, I think you were next. So hold on, let me unmute you. It takes like a second to um, uh, click. And I've unmuted you. All right, Julie, are you unmuted? Well, no. We still can't hear you. Um, Julie, I can't hear you. Oh, wait. Hold on. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Hi, Julie. So what's going on? Um, well, I have a two-part question. The first part is um, my son has been going down to take naps. Um, well, he wakes up off the full story. He wakes up around 7.30 and then he has to go down um, for a nap around noon. How, how old and is he? I muted you. 19 months. 19 months, okay. Alright, are you unmuted? Alright, so uh, 19 months, goes to, wakes up at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And he, I was trying to put him down for a nap around noon 
And that worked really well for us. And he would sleep for two to three hours and go to sleep at nighttime like a champ. Okay. And then right around the same time, two things started to happen um, about a month ago. He wouldn't nap um, in his crib. Well, anywhere. I mean, he only napped in his crib, but he wouldn't nap um, at noon. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried pushing it to 12.30 or 1 o'clock, but um, regardless of the time, he would usually stay in his crib for about four Oh, um, hold on. Hey, guys, don't, hold on a second. Don't, don't mute other people. <laughs> hold on. I think, Julie, somebody accidentally muted you. <laughs> um, I, I think I muted myself. All right, so about a month ago, he, um, he stopped napping at he, noon. He stopped napping at noon, and um, it would take him about 45 minutes. Um, he'd throw his blankets out, you know, happy. You know, okay. babbling and talking away, but um, but he wouldn't nap. And for, you know, and then I'd go in. Sometimes he'd have a poop, and that would be you know a problem. I think maybe you mentioned something about poops or something they do to the protest poop. <laughs> it must be the protest poop. I had no idea about that. Anyway, so so he's been having a difficult time napping. Um, it's it's taken him up to like an hour and twenty five hour and thirty minutes to take a nap. And um, then at nighttime, he'll go to sleep around, I put him in bed around 7.30, and it takes him probably <clears throat> 10 minutes to fall asleep. Okay. Um, hold on. Uh, I got it. Okay. 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 <laughs> Don't mute Julie. <laughs> Don't mute Julie. <laughs> All right. And he'll wake so, up um, four or five times in the middle of the night crying. Hysterically. So, so when he goes to bed, I mean, 10 minutes is okay, right? So he goes, he right. falls asleep okay. Yeah. And he wakes up at night crying, and what happens at night? Um, so at nighttime, I don't know what's going on, but he'll wake up crying, hysterically crying. I'll go in, I'll, you know, make sure he's got, he has a pacifier, I'll make sure he takes his pacifier, and um, I'll pat his back a little, and then I leave. And he'll usually... Does that seem to help, or does he just seem like... It helps. Okay. So he's not. So he's aware that you're there. He's not disoriented and upset. Right. He's aware I'm there, and then it helps. I don't wait until he's completely asleep. I just pat his back a little, calm him down, leave the room. He tends to, you know, fuss a little bit when I'm walking out the door, and then he's mellow. But then, and an hour later, it happens again. Okay. And um, and that's been going on for the past month. Yes. So what's happening with naps? He just he just continues to hang out there for 45 minutes and then falls asleep. Yes. And how long does he nap once he finally falls asleep? Um, usually for two hours. Okay. Sometimes two and a half. So yeah. So um. So there's a really common and and typically pretty hideous sleep sleep regression around 18 months. Yeah. And 18 months and two years are sort of the last biggies, I would say. And a lot of people are taken aback by the 18-month one because um, things are kind of going smoothly for a while, and you sort of think, oh, you know, this is, life is pretty good. Um, so I'm guessing that's what happened because you said it started right around that point. Oh, yes. And I also suspect that what's happening a little bit, I mean, he's an amazing sleeper, right? 12 amazing. hours at night plus two to three hours during the day. Yes. So I'm thinking it might be a combination of things. One is which, the sleep regression, one is that he might not need quite as much sleep as he's getting, okay. like by a tiny bit. Because my thinking is, if if he's having a hard time falling asleep at noon, so he's not actually falling asleep until closer to to one ish, mm -hmm. and then he's sleeping for two to three hours. Now it's three thirty four. Right. Right. And that doesn't leave him enough time to accrue a significant enough sleep debt to fall asleep and stay asleep at bedtime. So when you talk about bedtime, you know the sleep debt. You need to be awake long enough to fall asleep and stay asleep. So he's falling asleep okay. I mean, 10 minutes is nothing. I don't care if he's grumbled around for, for 10 minutes. So he's yeah. falling asleep, but it's the staying asleep that's a problem. So that's yeah. where you get these, like, little wake-ups where he, previously he'd be sleepy enough that his brief arousals wouldn't push him into being all the way awake, and he would just kind of cycle through sleep throughout the night. He's not tired enough, so now when he gets to these brief, you know, sleep arousals, he's fully waking up. And he doesn't need a lot of help. I mean, he's just kind of grumpy. You know, you go in there, and he's like, oh, yeah, i got to go back to bed. But it's not, been as, it's not as easy as it was because he, he's sleeping too close to bedtime. 
Okay. Okay. So, um, so if you have to choose between an, a fantastic twelve-hour night or a long nap, you want you, you take the twelve-hour night every time. Like twelve-hour night is fantastic. So that's like this is our baby, and we're going to protect that twelve-hour night. So I think the fact that he's having a hard time falling asleep at nap time, I would actually experiment with. So, so one option would be you could push bedtime back, but he's probably going to wake up at seven thirty anyway. So if you push bedtime back, you're going to shorten the night, okay. which I don't want to do because it's awesome. So I'm thinking if he's having a hard time falling asleep at bed at nap time, you might need to wake him up a little sooner so that he can fall asleep and stay asleep at bedtime, which means we might be shortening his nap from three hours to two, you know, one and a half to. Sure. Because that's that's the lesser evil than the shorter night. Because my guess is, you know, 19-month-old kid, if his bedtime is 7.30, we probably don't want him sleeping at the very latest past 3 o'clock. Right? Okay. Like, that's probably where you want to sort of put the stake in the ground that says we don't want him to sleep past two because that's going to lead to these, like, grumpy arousals at night. Yeah. Okay. So, if he can't fall asleep earlier, that's, um, that's, you know, you can't make him sleep. So, if you're putting him down at noon and you've been doing this for a month and he's not falling asleep, then you can't make that happen. Like, that's, okay, that's, okay, that's what it is. But you can wake him up so that he's awake long enough to fall asleep and stay asleep at night. Okay. Does that make sense? So I would try that. And, you know, feel free to report back, like, and see what happens. But I feel fairly confident that if he doesn't sleep past 2.30 or 3, then the night waking and the crying where you have to rub his back, that's going to stop. Okay. Great. So you want to try that for a week and, and, and report back? I will. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Thanks All a right. lot. All right. Good luck. Um, so, uh, Nima, I think you came in next. Do you have a question? You have to visually wave because I can't hear you. Nima? Do you have a question for us? I'm going to unmute. I'm going to unmute Nima. Oh, sorry. Nima, do you have a question for us? Ah, she's listening. Gotcha. Um, Stephanie? Stephanie, would you like to share a question? All right, tell you what. I need a hand in the air if you would like to ask a question. All right, Jenny has a question. Um, all right, go ahead, Jenny. Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. Okay, great. Um, I have a three-and-a-half-year-old who is taking forever to get to sleep at night, and then as now waking up in the night, being scared, I'm scared, and she wants us to sit in there with her until she falls asleep. And then some nights she's just like awake and wants to eat and watch TV. And um, so we were doing so well with her, and now we have a one and a half year old, and he's finally started sleeping through the night, and we get 12 hours from him, which is fabulous. And then she's now a problem. And she stopped napping probably two or three months ago. Um, and it did it did a really good job at making going to bed much more effective and happen very quickly. I just would have to sit in there for 10 minutes after we did our routine and she would fall asleep. But um, it's not always that way anymore. And now, you know, sometimes she'll be in there for an hour and I have to sit in there. Otherwise, she's coming out of a room and being naughty and, you know, coming out to us and stuff. So tell so, me about what time her bedtime is and what happens at bedtime. So we usually start her bedtime around, like lately, since it got darker earlier, we've been doing bedtime between 6.45 and 7.15 for her. Okay. And, I'm just like 7-ish, seven 7-ish. Seven yeah, 7-ish. Seven and, she, and she's up by 6 or 7 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So she's getting 11 to 12 hours. Yeah, fantastic. If you don't count her awake time, and she doesn't take any naps. Um, but that's if she goes to sleep right at 7. So sleep, we, we start with, um, she's already had a bath and jammies. And we start with, um, we read some books. And then once we're done reading, we read like three or four books. Once we're done reading those, we turn off the lights and we sing a couple of songs. She goes into her bed and I sit on the chair. She goes into her bed and um, I sing a couple of songs. And then I tell her, okay, it's time for you to be quiet now. And go close your eyes and fall asleep. And sometimes I want to leave, and she's like, Mom, sit on the chair. And So I'm happy to do that if it's 10 minutes, but if the 10 minutes starts turning into, you know, 
she's talking about her day and, and imaginary puppies and things like that, and we're not sleeping, then I'm irritated because I want to get to my alone time. <laughs> so she is basically demanding that you hang out in the chair until she's fully asleep. Yeah. And then she wakes up at midnight or whatever. Yeah, so she was doing the I'm scared, comes into our room, you know, I'm scared, and she slept in our bed a couple of different nights, which was fine because she was sick and we were just we just did that. But now I'm starting to go back into her room because I really don't want her in our bed as as a regular thing. And so um, I've been going into her room, and for a few nights I've, you know, had to sleep in there because she just wakes up a lot and she's scared. She's, I remember when I was a kid being scared at night and mm -hmm. I'm still kind of afraid of the dark and so I remember that she's scared and, and I don't think she's always trying to work me. Sometimes she's working me and I kind of know it when that's happening but I think she's legitimately scared of the dark or you know just doesn't want to be alone. Yeah, no, um, she doesn't want to be alone, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm I'm pulling up a document. So I have a uh, I'm I'm working on a book, and I'm lucky enough that we have a pretty amazing um, local uh, child psychologist. And I basically was like, "Hey, um, you want to write some stuff for my book?" And she was like, "Sure." <laughs> wow. Um. So the two things I asked her to to weigh in on was um. Uh, and I'm trying to pull it up now, was uh, a kind of like the whole cried out and like, you know, I'm, I'm damaging my child thing. And also, mm -hmm. um, how do you, how to, how to respond to kids who have fears of the dark? Like how to be, you know, like sensitive, but also not let it kind of derail you. Yeah. And I, I loved... I loved everything that she had to say. And what she basically said is, you know, whether or not it's behavioral, like they're just getting up because they're like, they realize it's a great way to come sleep with mom, or they legitimately are afraid, your response is the same. So you don't have to be right. You don't have to guess right about what's really behind it. Your mm -hmm. response is the same. And so I'm, don't let me forget, we want to talk about how to talk about her nighttime fears and, and what, what that's about. But I want to be clear, our goal is to empower her to feel safe without you. Because... We, you know, when you have to sleep in her room or she's sleeping in your room, the, the, the underlying message there is, well, you're not really safe at night unless I'm here to protect you. And that's not, that's not what, we, what we want. So, um, so that's, that is definitely something we need to do with. But the root, the crux of the issue here is really what's happening at bedtime, right? And it's the same like if she was a newborn. She's falling asleep with you there. And even though she's, she's a kid now, she cycles through awake sleep, awake sleep all night long, and she... It's harder for her to fall asleep because you're there, and she knows you're leaving. The more she stays awake, the longer you stay. So right. her incentive is to not fall asleep because you're sneaking out the minute she leaves. So right. that's why the 10-minute thing isn't happening anymore. And okay. it, it won't. Like, she's wise to you, basically. The other issue is that, you know, at some point, as, as the night goes on, you get more and more and more awake, right? So at the beginning of the night, you're, like, dead asleep, but you get more and more awake. So then it's like, I don't know what time she wakes up, but it's probably like midnight or two. Right. She's not tired enough to easily fall back asleep. She looks over, the chair is empty, and you being in that chair is now her sleep association. So she comes to get you, she demands you sleep on the floor or whatever, you know, you got to come in the room. Because you, you being there is now her sleep association, and that's happening because of what's happening at bedtime. Okay. And that's also probably a bit of tied up with the night fears. Like, so it's, it's, all, it's all kind of tangled up together. But the great thing is she's three and a half. Like, if yeah. she were one and a half, it would be a lot harder. She's three and a half. So now yeah. it's something you can talk about. And, you know, you don't, you don't make it about the, the, the younger sibling or, you know, anything. You say, right. I, I would definitely start everything with a couple of conversations and set a deadline of, I don't know, whatever you're comfortable with, Saturday. We need to change our bedtime routine. This is not working. My being there is making it hard for you to fall asleep, and you need sleep so you can grow and be healthy. So we can't do this anymore. But I would put it all on her. So we're going to change what happens at bedtime. What would you like that to be? You know, like, and, and have, like, a big poster board. And, and you could draw pictures or cut out pictures from magazines. You know, we're going to do bath. What do you want to do? You want to, you know, what, what, you wanna, what, what do you want to do? You want to sing songs? You want to sing Christmas carols? Great. You want to read books? How many books? Great. You know, then... You want to kiss the dog goodnight? Great. Like, 
but put it on her and and really like no request is too outlandish provided that it's you know it's reasonable but like it's great you want to brush your teeth first great sure and you write it down and you maybe have like check marks and you go great we're going to check oh did that check great did that yeah. check and the last step though has to be you giving her a hug and a kiss and walking out the door like that's it but you tell her this is happening and you tell her why and you you know like this is going to happen and you mean what you say which means if she calls for you, you don't come back and sit in the chair. Like, the sitting in the chair is done. Okay. Now, again, there's there's many, many tools you can use at this age. So it's up to you which you think are going to be best for your daughter. You could make bedtime tickets, like literally like two pieces of cardboard with some aluminum foil and some glitter glue. And if she needs you to come back in for one minute, it costs her a bedtime ticket. You can also incentivize her not to use her bedtime tickets because she's old enough. You could do a reward chart. So every morning that she still has her two bedtime tickets, she can trade them in for a gold sticker, and seven gold stickers equals something awesome, which is tough to do at Christmas because she's going to get stuff anyway. But, you know, maybe it's uh, a treat to go get ice cream or, you know, something like that. Okay. Um, but you have to be very clear. Like, the ticket means I can come in and give you a hug and a kiss, and then I'm out. That's it. Okay. Um, you know, I would also talk about some bedtime rules. She's not allowed to come into your room. If she has a bad dream or... Developmentally, she's too young to have dreams, so she's probably not dreaming. But if she has a night fair, you go to her because we don't want her to control where you are in the household. You go to her and say, okay, great. And we talk about you want to acknowledge. So I'm going to actually just read directly from the PhD so you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> she basically is like, you want to acknowledge their fear. And, you know, that might be talking about things like, um, you know, what, you know, what are you afraid of? You know, it might be pirates in the closet, somebody's going to break in, you know, and then you want to acknowledge that and empathize with that. Like, wow, that, that is scary. Pirates are scary. You know, they're not nice people. Um, um, but there's no pirates in the house. You're safe. You know, like you kind of really, these messages, and it's mm -hmm. time to sleep. And then during the day, so not at 2 in the morning, because nobody's solving problems at 2 in the morning. During right. the day, we work on some techniques around how to manage our fears and anxieties. And she has like a whole long list, um, and I love them. But there are things like uh, belly breathing. Has that ever come up? Like Sesame Street talks about it. You know, belly breathing is like making your belly like a big like a balloon. And then, you know, yeah. and you might do that with her. Like, let's do that right now. Like five times. Like, <gasps> you know, like yoga. In with the good, bad, out with the bad. Like belly breathing, vi um, visualizing things, drawing pictures where, you know, we make it silly. So instead of having like a scary pirate, I don't know what her fears are, but, you know, instead of a scary yeah. monster, we make like a little monster who's so tiny that he like sits in our hat and, and we wear him in our snow hat or whatever. Like mm -hmm. making things silly. Um, games where we play in the dark. Maybe like where you hide an item, you know, you take a special item and you hide it. And maybe you first start with like hiding it in a room that's, you know, have lights on. And then you start hiding it in rooms where it's dark. And then maybe you like make the whole house dark and you play it in a house that's dark where everyone's playing the game in the dark. Right. Um, so it's like we get comfortable like being alone in dark spaces. And like, so we do things during the day to kind of empower her to be okay alone in the dark. Um, but we don't want to just keep saying like, oh, you know, you're safe because mommy's here because that's not, you know, right. that's not, you don't want her to have that, that sense. But you definitely, you know, acknowledge and say, yeah, you know, sorry you're scared. Sometimes I feel scared too, but there's no pirates here. And we, daddy won't let any pirates. Right. You know, we, you know, you're never, you're, there are no pirates here. But it really, all of this, by the way, the night fears really is, believe it or not, linked to you being there at bedtime because that's what's leading her to be awake and then she's awake and that's when these kind of the fears and the stuff kind of can come right. into play. Can I, just one more thing that I forgot to mention. Sometimes in the night she asks when she's, she'll wake up and ask to have like a, like an apple bar, like a granola, something because she says she's hungry and she's not a very good eater. So um, sometimes I think she really is hungry a and my husband and I kind of differ on this with feeding her or not feeding her. What is your husband? What, what what opinion is he of? Well, he wants her to go back to sleep, and <laughs> so he just gives her the granola bar. Um, and I, I, but he does it throughout the day too. And I'm like, okay, you've got to stop doing that because she has to eat her meals so that we're not asking for a granola bar at midnight. Oh, look who's here. <laughs> <laughs> so what what 
do you think about the food after bed? And so sometimes when he, when she's falling asleep, she's like, I'm hungry and I want something to eat. But can you go back in the other room for me, sweetheart? Um, I'm talking. You want to talk to her? Me too. Um, she's like, my ears were ringing. So yeah, Dad, so Dad, Dad will eat at 9 o'clock at night. Dad eats a bowl of cereal, and then he's like, oh, and it makes me really tired. And so he thinks that that's okay for her, and I'm like, I don't think that's any better for you than it is for her. Yeah, I mean, I, I eat late too. But the point <laughs> is, here's the thing. I think that she's really smart, and she knows what your triggers are. Because you've even told me, like, well, I, I have fears, you know, things right. like that. You've told me... Oh, you know, sometimes there's maybe concerns about consumption during the day. So, and I don't mean that she's like an evil genius. I just mean that kids kids pick up on our sensitive touch points, right? Yeah. So, you know, um, they they figure out what works, and and that's because they realize that like saying things like, you know, I want to watch Rudolph. In the morning, doesn't get a, resp a positive response. Right. Right? Like right. no parent ever was like, "Sure, let's watch Rudolph." But when you go, "I'm hungry, mommy, I'm hungry," like that works, right? I um, and and so I really feel it's behavioral. It's totally capable of a twelve-hour fast, not not growing and thriving. And she's perfectly ready to get all of her calories in during the day, eating right. at night. It, it rewards the wake up. There's a lot of attention now. You know, now like you're in the kitchen and you're you're getting a treat. Now we got to brush our teeth, so we just got sugars on our teeth. Like it's a whole thing. So I think for a kid who's having a hard time staying in bed at night, that's just really behavioral. And I would just be very, you know, again, acknowledge her feelings. Oh, I'm sorry, you're hungry. I don't like to feel when that my tummy's empty either. Breakfast is in six hours. Maybe tomorrow you can have a little bit more dinner. So we won't feel like this at night anymore, and that's that's it. Then you're like, that's you know, yeah. Sorry, acknowledge your feelings. The kitchen is closed. You know, that's you can have an extra bowl of oatmeal. Um, right in the morning. Yeah. So I mean, I okay. hate to get in the middle of marital squabbles, but I absolutely I would be like, there's no. no. Yeah. Because she's just looking for excuses, and again, all of this stems from you being there at bedtime. That's okay. So I think that, that can, I can control very easily. If you can come so. up to a solution with that and come up with what works for you, bribes are really effective at this age. Mm -hmm. Special bedtime buddies, special nightlights, reward charts. You know, um, mm -hmm. but mean what you say. And if you say after Saturday, I'm I have to leave at bedtime because it's not good for your body, and that is most important to me. Then you're not that chair is done. It's right. books. You know, whatever's on your checklist, great. We did that, we did that, we did that, and checkbox, mommy's leaving. Good night. That's it. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Well, it's, you know, got to be firm, and you have to be confident that she's okay. She's not starving. Right. And think about things we can do to help her manage her anxieties about night fears and whatever those fears are during the day. You know, maybe you model whatever it is, model it, make a little Play-Doh monster and punch it. Right. You know, whatever. But at that same time, so that's not something you do at two in the morning. Right. Twelve hours is good for her age, right? That's fantastic. She's yeah. doing great. Okay. Thank All right. you. Thanks, so Jenny. All right. All right. Um uh, Amy, do you have a question? You have to wave, hold on. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> love your glasses, by the way. <laughs> Do. Yeah, I click the unmute button, but sometimes it just doesn't want to unmute. All right. Amy, go ahead. Hi. Um, hello from New Zealand. So it's bright and early this morning. I'm putting my daughter. What time is it? 7 o'clock. Wow. Well, it's 7.47 now, but yeah. Wow. Um, so cool. New Zealand. It took me ages to try to figure out the hangout, so I apologize I... for that. Hangout makes a fool of me every time. <laughs> um, so my little one is, she was born three months early. Okay. So in actual fact, she's 17 months old, but she's more like 14 months. Yeah. Um, so she's now on one nap a day. She's just decided two naps are old school. We don't do that anymore. So um, her routine is 7 p.m. bedtime. She sleeps pretty well throughout the night. Um, 
I guess my question is less about her sleep so much and more about what clothing to put her in. Hmm. Simply because um, here in New Zealand we don't have centrally controlled air. We um, basically oh, you, you don't sound like a New Zealander. Are you like an American? No, I'm American. Yeah. Oh, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm an expat. Um, so anyway, we we don't have central air, so it's not controlled temperature in the house. So. Uh, it's a bit of juggling and balancing. It's like you look at the forecast, you look at the temperature and the currently in the room, and then you kind of go, okay, what are we going to dress you in tonight? Heavy it's sleep sack. in New Zealand, right? Yeah, it, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming into summer, but it's been a really mild one so far. It's about at night. It gets to be about mm, fifteen, which I say, think in the fifties. Okay. So in her room, which is not well insulated, unfortunately, because it's a rental. It's um, it gets to be about it, it gets down to I don't know, yeah, uh, just above in the in the mid fifties. So you have to really dress appropriately. Wait, in her bedroom, it's in the fifties. Sorry. In her bedroom, it's fifty degrees or outside. Yeah. Well, it's in mid mid to upper fifties. Yeah, I mean that's that's like at the coldest. In her room, it's fifty degrees. Sorry. In her room, it's fifty degrees. Um, well, I'm sorry, I'm doing the conversion right now. Let me double check and see how much it is. No, no, I'm just of, are you describing the outside air temperature or the in the house air temperature? In the, in the house air temperature, I try to keep it to between 18 and 20, which is recommended. Okay. Um, by, sorry, and I'm sorry it's in Celsius because that's, that's right. I, got, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm putting her in a lightweight sleep suit at the moment. And I'm also putting her in long sleeve pajamas. Now, pajamas here are. Uh, long sleeve, long legs, um, but cotton because we don't really well. Most people don't dress them in acrylic these days because it's a fire hazard. Um, now I'm just kind of wondering what age and what temperature I should be thinking about getting her out of a sleep sack and putting her into more blankets and, and duvets and things like that. That's like a I mean, three to five year old thing. Okay. Yeah. Because so at the moment I'm using sleep sacks, but what do other people do? I mean, do they just put on lots of layers, or how does that work? Other yeah, parts? they do lots of layers. I mean, and sleep, sleep sack actually comes out. They have a like a like a big kid's sleep jammy that has feet, but it's effectively like a sleep blanket with feet in it, so yeah. they can walk in it. Like you can walk around in it. They kind of look like um, they kind of look like MC Hammer pants. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if anyone yeah. gets the reference, <laughs> but. Uh, Zumba <laughs> pants or whatever, um, or yeah, or you can double up on the jammies, like put on like a whatever size she's wearing, like a two T jammy, and then put like a three T jammy over that. Um, because the truth is, at fourteen months, sh the blanket's not going to stay on. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's she's probably a year and a half away from actually being able to sleep under a blanket. And if anything, a lot of they either kick it off or they get tangled up in it and get wake up because now they're stuck. So. Um, the whole blanket thing is is out. Um, so yeah, so doubling up and um, and and the the toddler sleep sack that has feet, so it's not mm -hmm. like a it's not like a sleeping bag, but it's still um, or or space heaters would really be kind of the way yeah. the way to go. And, and, and our house, we're we're coming into summer though, so it's going to start to be you know the opposite of being too cold is it gets too hot. It gets to be like I don't know over 85 degrees in her room and that's yeah. really warm when you're a little person and you're trying to go to sleep and the sun is still and totally, yeah, and you're kind of sweaty and it's like I don't know what is appropriate kind of weather gear f to put her in for that. Well, I mean when it's hot, first of all, I mean she could sleep in a diaper. Yeah, but then it gets colder in the middle of the night so it's like do you sneak in in the middle of the night and just put on a light sleep sack? While she's asleep? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I, just, I just wanted to make one last point about the cold. Kids do amazingly well with cold. So I live in Vermont. It, there is snow and ice. It's actually raining. It's super shite out right now. But our house, which we own, is not. It's it's old, so it's not super well insulated. My oldest son's room gets down into the 50s at night. That's inside his bedroom. Yeah. It's yeah. absurd because it's the farthest yeah. away from the fireplace, and it's the, the thermostat says it's warm, but his room is freezing. And we used to just layer him up, and he has never once complained. Now, he's eight now, and I will go in there, and I will say, Duncan, it is the Arctic in here. It is, like, the Arctic tundra. And I'm like, we have extra blankets. We could put a space here. He's like, no, I'm fine.
So they're amazingly, like, the, the temperature thing is not a big deal. The heat problem is that they're falling, they have a hard time falling asleep when they're sweaty and sticky. I have a hard time falling asleep over 80 myself. Like, when it's over 80, I'm like, ugh. Which is why we moved to Vermont. I'm not a warm weather person. But I, um, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would layer up. You know, and you could put on like two pairs of socks in a sleep sack, like if her feet are cold or whatever. But um, you know, if she's sleeping well, she's not. I mean, the only downside of cold is that it's so cold you're gonna get frostbite. That's not gonna happen. Or she's yeah. so uncomfortable that she can't sleep well. You know, in which case you need more layers. That's about yeah. it. Okay. So I do love your glasses, though. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, I I think her sleep is pretty is pretty good. Yeah. She's um, she sleeps through the night for the most part, and we haven't uh, touch wood um, hit any of those regressions yet. So I mean, we got four more months. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, and occasionally she wake up in the middle of the night, but I just learned to just let her sort herself out, and until it becomes you know. Yeah too rowdy in there and then I come in and kind of tap her on the back and, back and say love you bye bye it, you know? it sounds like she's doing great she does do pretty well I mean occasionally the naps aren't that great but I, I have really nothing too much to complain about she's she's an exceptional child alright like, yay and you're rocking it yeah well right. she is I see a few Thank more you. people here I just want to throw out for questions I see Lindsay and Stephanie and Janelle was there um, <laughs> Janelle, all right, Janelle just came running back to the camera. She's like, wait, wait, hold on. I'm trying to unmute you. Doop -a -doo. Um, doop -a -doo. uh, I'm trying to unmute you, Janelle. Okay, Janelle, go ahead. How's it going? Uh, all right, um, I have a question about um, kids who are potty trained and how that affects sleep. Uh oh. Because um, Cause you're potty trained, right? Yeah. Well, she's day trained. We were in uh, diapers at night and nap, but she's fully day trained, which is why I had to leave the camera because I had to take her. <laughs> but um, I've noticed since she's been pretty. Go watch Elsa. Um, since she's been pretty um. <sighs> Since she's um, been self-initiating and day-trained, that bedtime has been pushed a half hour from 7.30 to 8, where I end up putting her down. And then sometimes she doesn't get to sleep till about, mm, maybe settling until about 8.45 till 9 o'clock. And then she doesn't end up waking up the next morning till about 8.45. Okay. And... Because she used to go to she used to, she used to be at 7:30, and then she used to I would she would be asleep by about 7:45, and then she would wake up she'd wake up the next morning by about um, 7:15 maybe, and so now she's sleeping later, and I noticed the more and I'll let her, and I was letting her because I'm like oh it's taking her a while to go back to sleep. But then I noticed the more sleep she gets, and the later, and the more, the later her morning gets when she wakes up, she's grouchy. Okay. And then nap time gets pushed. Yeah, and sliding around. Yeah. Why and does bedtime start to get pushed back? How does the potty training and the bedtime thing? Connect? Because um, it used to be because she um, she has to go poo poo. She would okay. tell me, I have to go poo poo. I have to go poo poo, and she wouldn't go poo poo. So it had to be the point where I had to set a timer. And so I have to saying she has to poop, but she's not pooping. Right. And I have to poop is the oldest trick in the book. Yeah, well, it's what the potty training lady called the bedtime potty pit. Mm -hmm. And um, and I and because I have diapers on my side, because she's gonna end up in a diaper anyway. I I'm not like sitting there for two hours waiting for her to um waiting waiting for her to poop. Yeah. So it was, it, that's what happens. So I. Because I, because I'm afraid of scarring her for life and having to rush her to go poo. I don't want to do that. So it's like, okay, baby, you have this amount of time to go poo, and I know if she really does have to, she will in 15 minutes. And um, so not pooping. There's no pooping yeah. happening. So um, 
I've been successful at getting her into bed by 8. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it's a crapshoot whether she'll fall asleep in 15 minutes or in 45. And usually she'll just be, you know, singing to herself, you know, tossing around. Her nap is later now too, right? Right. We had to change her nap. And this happened at, mm, when did this happen? It happened in August where I had to move her nap from, I had to play around with her nap time because she wasn't napping. She just was refusing to nap. And um, so but she's right around two, right? No, no, no. It's a, it's a one, one o'clock nap time. No, no, I mean, she's right around the age of two. Yeah, she just turned two in October. Yeah. And um, so I had to, um, her nap is at one, but again, it's, you know, a matter of, because of the morning. But now she's on the gym to she's nap. Well, nine. And the girl can sleep. I mean, if I let her, she will, I mean, if I put her down at one, if she could sleep till like four. Yeah, don't tell people that because they'll just hate I know, I know. I just, I totally just, people are going to hate me now. So, <laughs> but, it just sounds to me like the issue. Honestly, you know, I, don't, I know you don't want to scar her with the poop stuff, but, you know, come on. Like, the, the I have to poop is like the oldest trick in the book. Like, I oh, have yeah. to poop at bedtime. That's why I have a timer. Yeah. But I also think that it's hard because then you're out in the bright light of the bathroom. And oh, no, no. This is in a bedroom. Oh, yeah, you have, like, a little potty in there? I have a little potty in her bedroom. Yeah, if it was in the bathroom, I'd never get out of there. But she's never actually pooped. Uh, um, it, it's, it depends. Because sometimes she doesn't ever actually poop between after, excuse me, between um, putting her to bed. So from 7.30 to 8, she doesn't. But she does, she does pee. She does, she does go pee-pee. But it's just, I think for me, I, I had to learn that. Yeah, she just squeezed out a little tinkle because you're standing there and she's like, I know. Well, I, I gotta do something. I made yeah. a big fuss about it. <laughs> I had to shorten the timer because I kept, I was shortening the timer right now. It's at 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even phase her. Yeah, she doesn't actually have to pee. Because you know yeah. if you have to pee, it doesn't take 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I think she, and, it, and the funny thing is with the timer now, because I, ha I had it at 20, and it's now at 10 minutes, but because lately it was taking forever for her to go to bed. I mean, even if I had put her in bed at 8, she wouldn't fall asleep until 9. But, and she's, I didn't sleeping until, but she's sleeping until 9 in the morning. <sighs> True, yeah. So here's, here's, I think, what's happening. Because it's because she's waking up in the middle of the night, too. Well, I think I think that the, I think that you're a soft-hearted person in the uh, whole uh, protest poop at bedtime thing through you off your game because now yeah. you have this whole thing going on with the potty and the timer. And by the way, like this is there's like a lot of energy around this whole bedtime poop potty thing, which is rewarding it, right? Like now we're like, oh, and she's poop, like, you know, it's a whole thing. Yeah. She's old enough and smart enough that you just say like before part of your bedtime routine is using the potty, right? Yeah. So this is it. This is our last chance to use the potty till morning. If you have to go in the night, you have a diaper on, and that's what it's for. But if you want to pee and poop in the potty, this is it. That's And it's not mean. You're just, that's it. This is our chance. Which is, it's, it's, like, life. it's like life, by the way, right? Like, some, you know, we're at the rest stop. you got to go potty now because we're getting on the freeway, and there's not another rest stop for three hours. Like, this is life. So that's it. And I think what's happened is, all of the, the pooping shenanigans have shifted her night sleep back, and that's throwing your schedule off because she's sleeping in way late in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's, she's like, I'm no dummy. So, so now everything's kind of mucked up because she's sleeping until 9. So if you want her going to bed falling, and falling asleep at, you know, 7.30, you're going to have to start waking her up earlier in the morning to get her wake-up time, you know, back to where it was, which was still pretty awesome, right? It used to be like 7.15. Yeah, that's fabulous. So, so if you want her going to bed at that hour, you need her to wake her up earlier. I mean, yeah. she's still sleeping twelve hours a night, and she's which is fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's now she's awake when you're up, which is not great, and she's being awake in bed for a long time, which is also not great. Yeah. So you either have to accept the late bedtime, like that her bedtime is eight forty-five. Yeah. Or you need to wake her up earlier in the morning to get her shifted back to the 7.30 to 7 
kind of and, schedule that you were on. And that's also, by the way, her sleeping until 9 in the morning is probably also why she's having a hard time falling asleep at nap time, because she's not awake long enough. Well, actually, the weird thing is, is nap time she actually falls asleep sooner. Okay. Which is weird, but it's great. Um, I think for me, it's just a matter of, I guess, I don't know, I just feel bad having to wake her up, but 90% yeah, but I mean, if, we, have if this is 15 minutes a day, so if she's waking up at 9, you're going to wake her up at 8.45, 8.30, 8.15, like, it's just a tiny, tiny bit, you know, like, and then you're going to slide it, slide it back to 7.30. And and you're going to continue, you know, at the same time, you're going to be moving her bedtime back. So you're just, it's just a, a tiny little tweak. It's not like waking her up. She's not missing out on vast quantities of sleep. It's like, let's get her up a tiny yeah. bit earlier. Well, I, I know. It's just, I think what threw me off was the fact when she got sick. Yeah. And it was a matter of just letting her sleep and stuff. But, um. Well, we're so focused mom. on sleep, it's unnatural to wake them up. But it, that's, that's how we, that's. You can't just put her down to bed earlier and expect her to fall asleep. She has to yeah. wake up earlier so she's awake long enough so she can fall asleep. I also had a question, though, about naps at her, the length of the nap at her age. Yeah. Should it be two hours? Is that, is that like, the Are you concerned time? that it's too long or too short? Um, I don't know. I mean, because two hours of freedom is awesome. Three hours of freedom is even more awesome, but then I have to pay the price at bedtime. So it's just a matter of, do I just cut her off at two hours? The, the perfect nap length is such that she's sleeping well at night. So if three hours means she's not falling asleep or staying asleep at night, then three hours is too long. Right. For her. There are other kids who can sleep for three hours. Yeah. But she's sleeping 12 hours at night, so a two-hour nap is fantastic. Mm, okay. So when I do this time change thing, do I start with the morning wake up or do I start with nap time wake up to put her to bed? So her has her nap shifted out too? No, it's just it's just a, um, it's still one, and she'll fall asleep. Actually, no, it's it's about one. She'll fall asleep about one fifteen, one thirty, and then sleep until three. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I would yeah I would just start waking up earlier in the morning, and. And uh, and and fly, you know, and, and hopefully, but the time she actually falls asleep, because right now it's sort of all over the place, kind of sinks back up as she moves up in the morning. But I wouldn't let her sleep past, you know, three ish. Yeah. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just think it's some tweaks, and, and I think, you know, you use your words. So when it's the last potty of the night, you use your words and you say, you know what, this is it. This is it. So if you have to go to potty later, that's why we have the diaper. That's what the diaper's for. So if you want to go potty in the potty, this is it. And sometimes that goes smoothly, and other times it's just like tantrum, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with a tantrum at night. I know, but you know what? You can't make kids eat, sleep, or poop. So if she doesn't want to go, she doesn't go. And what's the natural consequence of her not going on the potty? She's got to use the diaper. Right. Yes. Okay? That's what they're there for. Great. Yeah. We have a plan for that. You know, and that way you're not engaged, and it's not a power struggle because you don't, you know. Yeah, that's the thing too is that it's being calm, and it's not making it a power struggle because I yeah. notice when I do that, it's just it's harder, and it's no no potty no potty power struggles because you will lose you will lose that one <laughs> you will win. She yeah. literally has the power in that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like hey, whatever, that's fine, great. You don't want to go, don't go. We'll put the diaper on at bedtime. If you have to go later, you have that. That's it. But I would tell her at like lunch, you know, after after we read books and have hugs, there's no more potty in your room. Like, that's not it. You know, bedtime is bedtime, not potty time. So, okay. anyway, I don't feel bad. I I've been drawn into this too. Like I totally have had fallen prey to the I have to poop thing. So it's, yeah, you're that's not the only one. one. <laughs> that's why the timer's ten minutes. Yeah, but it's still it's still. It's so rewarding. Bedtime's bedtime. Yeah. Here's potty time. Here's, here's bedtime. You don't want to use potty time? Poop in your diaper. No. Yeah. All right. I know it's hard, but. Thanks. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I have to actually pick up my kids soon, but I could probably take one more question. Lindsay? Did you want to? I know Lindsay and Stephanie have been here a long time. Um. Hold on, give me 10 seconds to unmute because it seems to take.
Lindsay? Yeah. Hold on, I'm trying to unmute you. It's like a lag with the muting. I'm not unmuting. Yeah, you. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you. You've waited so patiently. I'm clicking the unmute button, but it's not unmuting. Um, there. There we go. I think I did it. Oh, you did it? <laughs> okay. Um, I had muted myself earlier because I had to join back. But um, thank you so much anyways. And I'm so glad that you're doing this and your Facebook page is so helpful too. Thank you. I'm sorry. With your website. I'm sorry that it's the Google it's always rocky with the Google Hangouts, but I'm just so appreciative. But um, our little girl Tegan is sixteen months old. She's mm -hmm. always been a horrible sleeper. I mean, even from the first when we brought her home from the hospital. Mm -hmm. But right now I feel like she's the best she's ever been, except for it takes her um, sometimes two hours to go to sleep at night uh. and I'm like what am I doing what am I doing but she's the thing is, is that we have a later schedule she goes to bed around 8 8 30 mm -hmm. because she I I hate getting up early and we sleep t she sleeps till 8 um, the thing is is that she takes a three-hour nap two to three hour nap in the afternoon and then whenever it comes time for bedtime routine, she is definitely showing signs of being tired. She's yawning. She's rubbing her eyes. She's fussy. And, you know, things just start going downhill. So we do the whole, like, a bedtime bath, and we read books, and we'll sing a song or two. And then she runs around in her crib and talks to herself. I mean, it used to be crying, but we did cry it out. And now it's just like she just hangs out in her crib for um, anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours. So you put her in her bed at 8, but she's awake until 9, 30, 10. Yes, sometimes 10, 30. Okay. And yeah. I'm like, that what is my... That's what like, time is her nap? She goes down for a nap usually anywhere from 12, 30 to 1, and then she'll wake up around 4. 1 to 4? Yeah. And that's normal, like she's not, always done that. Yeah, well, I mean, in the last, um, well, since we cut down to one nap, yeah. Okay. In the last few months. And I thought, maybe I need to cut nap time shorter, but then I tried, and she's just a hot mess after that because she's so tired. Um, so she, so her, so her night sleep really is 10, 10 to 8, 10 to 8, 8.30. Yeah. So she goes 10-hour nights and a three-hour nap, a huge three-hour nap. Um, and, I mean, sometimes her nap is short, like two and a half hours, but usually it's two and a half to three hours. Yeah, yeah. And I wake her up in the mornings at 8. Like, she would sleep till, sometimes she's, like, on the weekends, she slept till 9.30 in the morning. Wow. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty unusual. I think that, so what I've learned is that um, there are, most kids are, are early morning risers, which means no matter what time you go to bed, you're up at 6. So that's why all the messages in the books are always like, go to bed early because, you know, I don't know what percentage mathematically, but let's say 70% of kids will wake up at early times no matter what time they've gone to bed. Your daughter is sleeping late, so she's definitely able to shift her sleep so that if, you know, you can go to, have her go to bed later and she still sleeps like a champ. I think the real issue here is what I'm hearing is that her functional bedtime currently is actually 10 o'clock at night. Right. And her, we're waking her up at 8, but if we didn't, she would sleep an 11-hour night from 10 to 9. Like, that would be where her body has regulated, her sleep-wake cycle has regulated around that. And then she takes a relatively mammoth nap, and for whatever reason, she's able to get from 4 o'clock until 10 o'clock, which is 6 hours. Right. 
And I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't complain. I mean, she's not screaming. We've done Cry It Out, so she understands that when we put her in the crib. Yeah, two hours. That's you know around, what? but I'm like. That's going to, I have to, I, you know what, I really, my fear is that that two-hour wakefulness is going to bite you in the ass at some point, because that's too long. She's going to start not wanting to do it. She's going to start ready. As she gets older, developmentally, she's going to fight you because she's not going to want to do this two-hour sit time, you know? Right. Too long. So I think that um, it's really up to you. I mean, I think the fact that you're routinely waking her up in the morning tells me something is off because, you you know, there are times where kids are transitioning where you have to wake them up to kind of make the schedule work, but as a routine, you don't want that to happen as like a long-term thing. So she wants to right. sleep currently from 10 to 9. That, you don't want her hanging out with you until 10 o'clock at night. No. Right? <laughs> so if you want her ready to fall asleep sooner, I think we need to make some some scheduling changes and see if we can't, so that's where her body, when I say body clock, I just mean circadian rhythm, right? We have these hormonal regulation system and it's immensely powerful. Like it's really, really hard to fight that. So the whole circadian rhythm is why, you know, it's very, very hard for us to stay awake all night, you know, like, you mm -hmm. know, we just become kind of a mess at like three in the morning. We just can't function because our body clock is like now. Um, that's why they call it primetime TV because it's almost impossible to fall asleep during primetime because our bodies are wired not to. So it's, yeah. it's, this system is really powerful. So when you're trying to fight that, you're going to lose because it's more powerful than you are. So her body clock is set up this way. You know, I, I think it, the question is, what are you willing to give on and how much do you want to change it? If it were me, I would want her falling asleep no later than 30 minutes after bedtime, like tops. So yeah. to me, the two-hour thing and the fact that we're waking her up in the morning says it's not, it's not right. I personally think that the answer is to start – I mean, I like to sleep in, too. Don't get me wrong. I drag myself out of bed every morning. I think a 7 a.m. wake-up is probably a more reasonable goal. Okay. And that we try to sh shift and or shorten that nap so that she okay. is able to fall asleep earlier. You know, okay. I would take yeah. it as, for right now, she's falling asleep at 10. That's her bedtime. So bedtime is not 8. Bedtime is 10. Like, 8 is the long time, and 10 o'clock is bedtime, right? Like, <laughs> right. you know, like, that's her quiet reflection time. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I've had to put, like, a little, like, three books in her bed with her and a stuffed yeah. animal because I'm like, well, if she's just going to run then she needs something to do for two hours. Yeah, I mean, in, in two years from now, you're going to put an iPad in there because she's going to be so bored. So it's just... No. <laughs> two hours of quiet reflection time is not okay. So if it were me, I would be saying, okay, I need her waking up earlier, I need that nap happening earlier, and I need it ending sooner. So if she can be okay. awake for six hours, which is from 4 o'clock till 10 o'clock, and we want her going to bed at 8, then her nap needs to end at noon. And if her okay. nap needs to end at noon, it needs to start sooner. She needs to wake the day sooner. So just like Janelle and I were talking about, you're going to have to do some tweaking and possibly right. some shortening. Because I would rather her have her sleep at night well than have a three-hour nap. Like, I'd rather have her have a two-hour nap and sleep well at night than, than get right. all this day sleep. Because I think the day sleep, the, the long nap, is her making up for the sleep she's not getting at night. So I think she's just kind of shuffling her sleep around. I, I think you're right. Yeah. Functionally, I would start waking her up 7.45, 7.30, 7.15, and I would shuffle that nap up so it maybe starts closer to noon. And again, gradually, okay. 15 minutes a day. So we wake her up a little bit earlier, we put her down for her first nap a little earlier, and if she's not awake, we wake her up. So instead of it okay. being 4, we back that down into 3, maybe even 2.30. But, you know, so we're shifting everything. If she's okay hanging out awake in bed, and you can put her down at 8. But the issue is when kids are awake for a long, long time in bed, we start creating a new sleep association, which is that bed is where we don't sleep. And even for adults, right. like, like doctors would recommend, like if you're awake after 20 minutes, get out of bed because you don't want to be developing this bed is where we don't sleep kind of thing. So I feel like it's risky to have her there for two years, for the, I mean for two hours for the long term. But for the short term, okay. So as we're shifting the nap her wake-up time and the nap up so that she's awake longer, what I would hope to see is that two-hour time gets shorter, right? Okay. And we get yeah. to a point where she's waking up at 7, going down for a nap at noon, 
and you don't let her sleep past 2.30. And then okay. we see what happens at bedtime. And we look at where, when do we put her down, when does she actually fall asleep? If after, let's say, a week or two, she's falling asleep at a new consistent time, I would say that's her new bedtime. So if okay. that's 8.30, if she, you know, if we put her in bed at 7 and she falls asleep at 8.30, 8.30 is her actual bedtime. And then we kind of maybe need to rethink about putting her in her crib closer to 8.30. That sounds, that sounds like a plan to me. Okay. We'll I would definitely do it. And I would, you know, I think a good... A, Two good signals that you're 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 on the right track is it doesn't take her longer than 20 minutes to fall asleep, and you're not waking her up in the morning. Like that's kind of how you know it's you're okay. This is work. You know what we're doing is working because those things are happening. Okay. Yeah, because I wake her up. I mean, um, I wake her up four mornings a week, to yeah. and that's just because we have to be somewhere. <laughs> but she's not falling asleep until 10, so that's you know like if right. we get her falling asleep at eight, then hopefully mm. you wouldn't have to wake her up at all anymore. Right. So I I'll would try that um, if you can. Okay. Okay. I literally have ten minutes. I have to go. I ha I see Lewis here, and I'm so thrilled because I never see dads. So I'm gonna attempt to unmute Lewis because it's such a thrill to have a man on the call. Um, it's a big day. Um, while I'm unmuting Lewis, true story. I don't know how many emails I get, but it's it's I get a ton. And I, I pretty much respond to all dad emails because I get two a year. <laughs> so I get, like, I don't know. I, I probably get 5,000 emails from readers a year, and two are from dudes. And I, if I see, like, a dad name, I'm like, oh, I, you know, I, <laughs> I should respond because it's so cool to have a dad who's... Um... So I'm trying to unmute you. It's not... Are you... Did you mute yourself? There we go. Oh, I had it. I think I'm off mute now. So anyway, so yeah, you're one of the two. Yay! That's wonderful. So literally in 10 minutes I have to go because I have to pick up kindergartners. But what can I do for you? Um, well, I, you know, I, I don't know if we have a specific problem. It's to one nap. Our son is 14 and a half months now, give or take. Um, you know, the, the nap schedule has been shifting. Uh, it it gone... It's just around noon to one, um, but you know, occasionally he'll do two hours. Occasionally he'll do one. Occasionally he he just skipped his nap yesterday, which was a little tricky. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, just in whether we need to be fairly consistent in that one afternoon nap and what time usually it should be um, would be my question. What time does he wake up in the morning? Seven, seven fifteen. And what time is he generally napping? Um, so, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's only in, in the last one plus weeks that he's, we've shifted him to a, to one nap. He used oh. to do maybe, he used to do maybe 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., uh, and then he would do like a 3 p.m. nap or two, 2 to 3 p.m. nap, um, for, you know, an hour to an hour and a half each, sometimes less. Um, so just in the last week and a half, we shifted to one nap just because he wasn't doing a, an earlier morning nap. And he goes to bed around seven-ish. Seven to eight, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I keep talking about circadian rhythm, which is super, super boring. I totally get that, but it's really, really important. So, when you fall asleep mm -hmm. at the same time every day, your body will produce melatonin, which is a critical sleep hormone, at that time every day. So, the issue mm -hmm. of what time is less important than it happening at the same time every day. And the most, the, the cornerstone that everything else hooks on is bedtime. So the first thing I would say is pick a bedtime and stick to it. Like eight, 7 to 8 is a pretty big window for, a, for 14 yep. months. So I mm -hmm. would say, you know, whatever the time that most is going to be consistently workable for you, that's the time. So maybe it's 7.30, you know. Okay. Um, and then he sleeps from 7.30 to 7, but the bedtime happening at the same time every day, that sets your body clock because your body is producing serotonin and melatonin all day long. Melatonin dissipates in 10 minutes, meaning this, this hormone is created that helps your body fall asleep. If you're not falling asleep, 10 minutes later that, that hormone's gone. Your body's said, oh, it's not the right time to sleep, so it's pushed it away, and now you begin to produce serotonin, which is a stimulant and a stress hormone, and it makes you not fall asleep. So... So that's where the consistency comes in, and I talk about like having to be like militantly about the schedule. That's why, because you have 10 minutes and you've missed it. 
So if he's falling asleep, if he's butt in bed 7.30 every night, within 7 to 10 days, his body will be like, okay, this is what we, this is it. And by the way, this okay. is for adults too. This is why like airline pilots are so messed up because it, you know, when you're not sleeping the same time every time, your body is like a wreck. So I would say it starts at 7.30, that's going to help set the clock. He's sleeping until 7.15, which is fantastic. You know, most kids have a nap around 1. Is is really mm -hmm. pretty common. And again, the nap at this age is kind of flexible, so it's not that there's a bad time or a good time. It's just that it's happening at the same time every day. So when he was six okay. months old, like you're looking for sleepy signs and rubbing the eyes and, oh, it's time for a nap. At 14 months, it really is by the clock. Like, we are home, okay. he's in the crib, seven, you know, 1 o'clock, 7.30, that's it. And if you can stick with that for, like I said, five to seven days, ten at the outside, his body will produce melatonin and he will fall asleep. The issue and why you're having kind of some nap problems right now because he just dropped a nap is his body hasn't regulated around what the new normal is. So yeah. it's a little harder for him to fall asleep. So you kind of have to just ride the rocky waves and mm -hmm. be consistent and let his body do what it's going to do. But all you can do is say, okay, we're going to aim for this, this window. And I say 1 o'clock because that's normal, but, you know, if you have a scheduling issue, that makes that inconvenient. That's fine too. Yeah, I mean, we had a we had an issue because he he skipped a nap because you know both of his grandparents were babysitting, so he was a little amped, and he and then the next that night he slept for 13 hours, and then the nap was earlier than it, so it was, it was just a little bit a little bit up. Holly and company and grandparents um, do that, but so you just got to have your game, which is this is this is the schedule we work okay. around because there will always be like other people who are like, but we want to. Go exactly. do this, and can't you yeah. blow it this one day? And mm -hmm. kind of you're like, no. I mean, <laughs> next week, but you know, you're like, this is our, we got to do our thing. Okay, we'll give that a shot. So just, right. just consistency, you know, each time, the same time each day is for you naps and bedtime, down. and you lock it okay, down, and then within ten days. Okay, great. Hopefully Thank sooner. You. Hopefully sooner. Okay, All right. Well, hey guys, thank you so much for coming. I apologize for the tenth time for my. Never-ending G plus confusion issues. Um, I can see there's 10 messages waiting for me, probably from people who are like, I can't get in. Um, but thanks for coming, and I will post on YouTube uh, for those of you who couldn't participate today. Bye, guys.